first of what will be the iPhone 10 clones this year. This is the Vivo V9. So let's start with the unboxing first. So you look at the back of the device, check out specs. You have a 24 megapixel camera, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. So let's pop open that box. So right here you have probably papers and a case I'm guessing. Yep, you have a soft plastic case. Not much in there. That's a label. So let's take out the phone. Okay, let's put it to the side. And you see right there you have a US China plug. Also Japan. Japan uses that same way. And you have a USB. Oh, that's a US micro USB, not USB C. That's a little bit disappointing that this phone does not use USB C. And you have some stock head earphones. So now let's um, get to my favorite part, peel. Oh, there's nothing peel, so I just slid out the phone. And then that's it. Feels really good in the hand. Very, very light. I believe it weighs 180 grams, which is really like, no, 150 grams. I just checked the fact sheet, sorry. So power on the device. So slap on the case. It actually fits very nicely, and the case gives the phone quite a lot of grip. Although the back of the phone has grip, it's grippy too, because it's kind of, I, I don't know if this is glass or plastic, but it's a little grippy. I like the texture too on the back of the Vivo logo. It's a nice feeling phone, just a really bad fingerprint magnet though. So now, now that the display's fired up, so you see, the bezels on the top and the sides are really slim. Probably slimmer than the iPhone 10. And the bottom bezel, it's, it's there's a little bit of bezel, but it's not that bad at all. This is a very immersive looking phone. Anyway, I'm going to play around with the phone for a bit and I'll be back. Hey everybody, I'm back. I played with the Vivo V9 all day yesterday and all night. So my very first impression is this screen is awesome. I really like having a screen this big and a body this small. So to give you an example, this phone, it's about the same size as the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, except the display is a little bit bigger at 6.3 inch compared to the Huawei Mate 10 Pro's 6 inch. This phone is also a little bit shorter than the Samsung Galaxy S9 and about the same same riff across, but again, it has a slightly bigger screen. This is, just seems like a really good screen size for me, 6.3 inch, but um, the phone feels good. I can grip it very easily one-handed, and look, my thumb even can reach all the way across, so one-hand typing hasn't been an issue. So there are rumors that Apple is actually the next iPhone they're making, there's going to be a big version with a screen around the size. If that's the case, I'm all for it. Please do it, Apple, because I actually find the iPhone 10 screen a little bit too small. Now, maybe I'm getting old, but um, when I open up Safari, I find the text sometimes a little bit hard for me to read because the screen's a little bit cramped. And uh, it's a little bit shameless, to be honest, because it's not just the notch. Like, everybody's doing the notch this year, other than Samsung, so it is what it is. But the fact that they even use the same wallpaper, even the boxes, the Vivo V9's box kind of it looks just like the iPhone 10's box. So, I don't know why they couldn't choose a completely different wallpaper um, on the box and all that just to you know look a little bit different and and then also the swiping gestures Vivo has so let me explain Vivo actually introduced swiping gestures on Android last year with the Vivo V7 Plus before iPhone 10 introduced it but then Vivo changed it up now to more resemble an iPhone so you notice that there's a little bars down at the bottom. Just like the iPhone 10, the I iOS does a bar down at the bottom. So this is to let you swipe up to go home. Now again, Vivo began doing this last year, but when Vivo did it last year, there were no bars. These bars were definitely inspired by iOS. But having said that, I really like navigating around Android. Like, they look shutter speed is relatively fast, and you have a lot of, um, including a bunch of different filters right here, and. Up here you have settings, slow motion, ultra HD, time lapse, and settings to shoot timers. And so yes, because of the notch, when you watch YouTube videos, it defaults to this letterbox version of the video, but you are able to fill out the whole screen, which chops out a little bit off the top and bottom, and the notch digs into the video. But it's it's not that big of a deal because this notch is a little bit smaller than the iPhone X's notch, so it doesn't bother me that much actually. So there's only a single fine speaker from the bottom right here that it's very easily muted. Alright, you all know I gotta do my K-pop video test just to test the sound. 
So 50% volume right here. Let's fill up the video. So you see, I don't think the notch gets in the way that much. That's 50. So it's about 90% right here. So speaker gets quite loud and not bad for a single fine speaker. You can mute it very easily, but there's actually a little bit of bass. It's not as flat as some of the phones I've tested with single speaker. This single speaker sub, it's about as good as a single speaker. See, so it's a little bit slower than the OnePlus 5T. It's not immediate, but it's definitely under half a second. Fingerprint meter on the back is fast too. You can use, you can use both at the same time. So if you're interested in benchmarks, for some reason I was unable to run Geekbench 4 on this phone. I think maybe because it's too new. Geekbench servers couldn't pick up the device. But I ran PC Mark and it scored at 4,934 in work 2.0 performance. So that's that which, which makes it very tough to kind of judge whether this phone should be purchased or not. Because we know that the OnePlus 6 will probably look just like this, except it will have better software because OnePlus has the best software in all of Android, in my opinion. So that phone's probably coming in May, so that's not that far from now. And that phone will probably go for like 500-ish. So for, this phone has to be a little bit cheaper for it to be worthwhile because the OnePlus 6 is going to have Snapdragon 845 too. So if you factor that, 845 for the 626 and better software on the OnePlus 6, this phone will need to be a little bit cheaper than that to be worth it. Unless you really want the phone right now, you don't want to wait till May, then this is a good option for someone who likes that all screen look and just an awesome screen to body ratio without sacrificing for a larger form factor. This phone is easier to hold than the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 and it has the same screen and it's a lot easier to hold. I cannot reach the other end of the screen like this with the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So, I am a little bit disappointed that Vivo didn't implement that under the screen fingerprint reader that you know the company has already pioneered. But I understand that that tech may be reserved for flagships. You know, maybe it's a bit expensive to implement into a phone that is not meant to be a really expensive premium device. But I'm really liking this phone. I'm gonna be taking this with me to New York to mess around. I'm going to New York by the way to check out Huawei and Xiaomi's new phones. So stay tuned to my channel, I will have more on those two phones in about four or five days.